Yeah, my people, let us um, quickly explore what is happening in China. Why are not going? Why are we not going? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Oh my God! This is really. I'm sorry, I cannot help you. Really. Oh my God. To start with, we have to understand where this whole thing comes from and why it is happening. Because in Igbo Native Palace, we used to say. What I'm saying in essence is that if you do not know where rain start to beat you, you will not even know where and when it will dry. And if you could not understand or figure out how water leaked into the boat you will get drowned since the time of history since we have read from the history the civilization of the world there had been a leap from agrarian age to industrialization they call it industrial revolution to the modern economy driven by technology and now we are fast tracking into the 5g from 1g 2g 3g 4g and now 5g in all of this leap africa had always been at the receiving end have we asked ourselves why now i want to open your eyes and if you are an african open your ears and listen and understand from the time of slave trade if you check very well, I have to be very brief. If you check very well, the Europeans that came in do not know the terrain. It was the black people in Africa that showed them the way. It was the Africans that sold or helped the Europeans to capture their people and force them into slavery. And at the time when Slavery is no longer fashionable and very expensive to run their farm and the world is shifting into industrial age where the use of machine and all of that will be employed to produce. That was how they now said it is no longer fashionable to force these guys out to come and work in our farm in Europe or in America. But rather, we keep them back in their home and go down there and colonize them and now force them to tap into all the wealth and mineral resources that have been deposited or that they are well endowed with that is how we started with this scramble for africa and the rest of them and let me tell you they didn't abolish slave trade just because of human face they abolished it in order to introduce the new wave of colonization or enslavement in the national scale that's what they call colonization good then from there they now moved into high tech where technology is now the order of the day and most almost all african countries you will say you have independence there eh? but you have never had any economic independence now the whole idea of setting up a structure of power over other less developed states in order to gather resources and use their labor force might sound familiar because that's largely what colonialism was the motives behind european powers expanding their territory to less developed nations in the 15th through 20th centuries were remarkably similar to the motivations between china's growing economic influence in the developing world today Despite what some may say, there is empirical evidence that China has been using these infrastructure investments to affect worldwide politics. And since from the time they are using the same mindset, the same system, the same, the same strategy on Africa, and it has been working for them. 
against Africans. And it is Africans, especially those at the leadership affairs, they are the ones that, 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 that are really selling Africa. Why will an African president or leader go abroad to borrow money and exchange it because all this money being borrowed? Now, I've heard that America is shouting that China is trying to give Africa loans that they cannot pay, which is a debt, a debt trap. But before I go any further, let's take a look at this particular speech made by a U.S. government official. Great power competitors, namely China and Russia, are rapidly expanding their financial and political influence across Africa. They are deliberately and aggressively targeting their investments in the region to gain a comp competitive advantage over the United States. China uses bribes, opaque agreements, and the strategic use of debt to hold states in Africa captive to Beijing's wishes and demands. So that's John Bolton, a former United States National Security Advisor. They are crying that China is taking over from them where they have stopped. They have overtaken them in exploitation of Africa. That is the simple truth if you don't know that. I'm telling you the truth. Yes, China is a bad news, but it is just selling cat to buy a dog, even to Kanoya house. What is sitting is still sitting there. And these Chinese, they are not smiling. You have seen what they have been doing to our people. You understand what these kids are saying? Oh, she, hey, great. Direct, direct translation for hey, great means black monsters. And in uh, another form, I would say that it's um, what do you call the N word. So, oh, she, hey, great. The next one they are saying is what? G Shandi. Yeah. Yeah. Low IQ. So you see, they wrote this on the blackboard for this African kid to read it. Was she hegwe? Which means, I am a black monster or I'm an N word with a low IQ. How on earth would you allow foreigners to come into your country? To exploit your own people and at the same time insult the entire black people of this and we cannot continue to lament the people that are selling africa is african leaders these people they come from whatever place they come from outside africa they come into this africa and this rich continent and they tap all our resources using our leaders our misleaders i so i so call them they kept selling Africa to the rest of the world, to the highest bidder. All they are interested in is to primitive accumulate wealth and transfer the fund to Europe. Now, for instance, Africa, especially in Nigeria, where corruption has its headquarters, where corruption is the order of the day, where if you are behaving normal, you will be seen as abnormal. We are getting into government offices is an opportunity to amass primitive wealth at the expense of the people. Now, these people, when you see the lifestyle, the, 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 the government, the government lifestyle, lavish lifestyle, wastage of a government, buying things that they don't need. In a poor country, their legislators will be demanding exotic cars, whereas the country they go to borrow money from, the European country they go to borrow money from, their legislators live in one room apartment. That is madness. And you think these guys, they don't know what they're doing? They know. Africans must wake up, especially the young ones. 
young Africans, you must wake up. It's a warning because what is yet to come, I tell you, colonization and slave trade that you had in the in the past will be a shy play to what we are going to face and worse of it, what our children are going to face. African leaders, the old African leaders, because they are all old, they are all expired. They can't take you to nowhere except to their grave. That is why you see me sweating, shouting, to knock some sense into African people, especially the youths. You are always being used because they're using the instrumentality of poverty and hunger. They deprive you of quality education. They bring religion to you to confuse you, thinking that everything comes from... Listen, God will never come down from heaven to solve your problem. You got to solve it yourself. Africa, it is time for us to redefine our civilization. What Chinese is doing to our people is appalling, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a wake-up call. Where would we be going to China? What are they producing there? And most of the things they are bringing into African countries are inferior products. If you go there, they will tell you that this is African standard and this is the rest of the world standard. African standard, the lowest standard. Because here is a dumping ground. And you pride yourself. You are an importer from China. What are you importing? Plastic rubber that you can produce at your backyard. What are you importing? Tires that we have every... That the Chinese are excavating the natural resources. And they take it, they use it to produce tires. You go there and pride yourself to bring one ship of tires. It's madness. And the reason why these things are happening is because we lack leadership. We only have old, old cargoes that are taking us to nowhere except to their graves. It is high time the African youth wake up. This is a wake up call. I'm making this video to wake up Africans. Everywhere you are, you need to sit up because these men, these men you call your political leaders, they are taking you nowhere. We are entering the 5G network. You know what 5G is? I've said that over and over here on this platform. I'm not going to repeat myself. You can go back and check. It's all about artificial intelligence. Let me tell you, African youths are very intelligent. African youths are smart, but they are being deprived of the oxygen to explore what is here. And who will give them the directive? Who will inspire them? Who will lead them to that? The leaders. Who are they? Those who are obsolete. Those who do not, who have sold their soul to the devil. It is high time we wake up. It is a misplacement of priority in Africa that we embraced the religion of the West and the Arab world at the expense of our own civilization. We misplace the priority of building big cathedrals and mosques at the expense of building good hospitals and good schools to train doctors and scientists so that when things like this that is happening now will be, will be brought to us, we know how to tackle it. We should not be taking handouts. Every day, these politicians, these Africans, they will go to Europe. They will borrow money. They are going to China. And China, what they are doing to African country, they will go there, collect money, or they, they go there, collect money, and they, they, are, they are demanding for collateral, which the countries cannot even pay. They are taking over the, 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 the properties of African nation, the treasures of African nation. That is what is happening. When they go there, they borrow this money, and when they return back to their countries, this money will be transferred back into their private accounts in those countries again. This money will find its way back to Europe, back to Asia, back to America. They will collect all those money back again. They understand what is happening while Africa is dying. It is time. Nobody will do it for us. Nobody is going to do this fight for us. We are going to do it. I want to join force with Malema of South Africa. This thing was a one thing called Africa. This was one thing. It was divided by colonizers. These borders are artificial borders. 
imposed on us by colonizers. Why do you want to behave like you are owning a colonizer's properties? Mm. These borders are colonizers' properties. They are not ours. Let us go back to African unity. We want one voice, one Africa. We must stop doing away with African hate, which was instilled in us by the colonizers. When you say, hey, there are too many Zimbabweans here, there are too many Nigerians here, hey, hey, you are doing the work of the devil, which is to divide Africans. Be angry with Nigerians and South Africans for doing crimes, the same, I mean Zimbabweans, the same way you were, you are with South Africans who commit crimes. They must be treated the same. It must not be because it's a Nigerian, it's a more crime. If a Nigerian uh, kills a person, it, it, that killing is twice. As if the murder by South African is lesser than a Nigerian murder. It's wrong. Crime is crime. Let's deal with it as crime. When it is a white person in South Africa, undocumented, he's called an investor. Not only a white person, including Indians and Chinese. These Guptas didn't have proper papers yet. These Guptas didn't have proper papers. No one dead called them Quereques. No one. But if it was my African brothers, we're going to be called Quereques because they don't have papers. Self-hate. It must come to an end. We need people like him. We need young men like him to come up. We need intellectuals who understand what is happening, who can redefine African civilization. Look at what is happening now. We're entering 5G. It is fast. European wars, Asian wars, they are all turning into robotic countries. Africa has an opportunity, an untapped opportunity, where nature and humanity interface. We can tap into that, redefine our our, our civilization, agriculture, food, living organically and not living like robots in the name of technological advancement. I'm not against it, but we must go at our own pace. That is the salvation of Africa. And that is why I'll keep speaking up. Someone said, which is true, and you have to support these people, I mean my people, for their liberation because that is the beginning of African freedom. In Biafra, Africa died. But in Biafra, Africa shall rise again. It is high time. We are all, irrespective of whom you are, where you come from, join force. Let us all together rebuild Africa. I'm signing out. Stay safe.